Hello chemistry students. In this video of problem sessions, I'll be solving a problem from the periodic trends chapter or periodicity. So in this chapter we talk about ionization energy, electron affinity, metallic character, and of course atomic radius. They also discuss ionic radius. The particular problem I'm picking is combining a comparison of both atomic and ionic radius. So just as a review, we know typically when we have a cation, what eventually happens is the metal's outer valence electrons are lost. And when you lose, let's say, lithium, which is in group 1A, it has one valence electron in the 2s1 electron configuration. That's why it's a group 1A, because it's in the first position of the S sublevel, when it loses that one valence electron, its respective cation gets much smaller. It's the same with all cations. The cations are smaller than their parent atoms because they lose this valence shell. And we see that the trend follows similar to atomic radius. As I go down a group, the ionic radii is bigger. And as I go from left to right, it gets smaller. Well, it's the same with the anion. However, with the anion, the difference is instead of removing valence electrons, we're adding valence electrons. So when we add the additional electrons causes an expansion of the valence shell because of the additional repulsion and the number of protons are outnumbered compared to the number of electrons. So again, it still follows the general trend. As I go down a group, I get bigger. And as I go for the anions left to right, I get smaller. The difference is the parent atom is smaller than the anion, where with the cations, the parent atom was bigger. Well, what do I do if I compare neutral atoms with cations and anions and how to determine their ranking in radius if I don't have these nice charts in front of me. So the problem reads, arrange this isoelectronic series in order of decreasing radius. So they give me the fluoride ion, the neon atom, the oxide ion, magnesium ion, and the sodium ion. So the first thing is, let's Think about, because they're saying electronic, right? They probably, they want you to think in terms of ions and uh, electrons, because the number of electrons is going to determine the radius. So let's do an electron configuration. We see that magnesium as an atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And again, it has that electron configuration because it's in the third period in the S block in the second position. Sodium's a 3s1 because it's group 1a. Neon, now, it's a filled first and second energy level because it's group 8a. Fluorine is a 2p5, and oxygen's a 2p4. But we're not measuring the atoms. That, that would be a little bit easier. We're actually measuring the ions. And the key here is it's an isoelectronic series. What does that mean? It means they have the same electron configuration. Iso, think of, you know, isosceles triangle, two congruent sides. Isometric, it means the same. Why is it the same? Well, in red, I'm showing the valence shell. The magnesium ends up producing the magnesium ion. And what do I do? The 2 plus means I lose the two valence electrons and I become a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. In the sodium, the plus 1, I lose the one valence electron. Neon is neutral. Why? It has a happy filled S sublevel and P sublevel in its second energy level, the valence shell. The fluoride atom wants one more electron. So it forms a fluoride ion and it becomes 2p6. And same with the oxide, it gains 2. So how am I going to rank these if I don't have a table? 
Well, the first thing is you got to be aware they all have the same number of electrons, and it's the electrons and their placement that determines the radius. It's also their repulsions that influence the radius. Now, because all these species are isoelectronic, and they all have the same number of electrons, we're going to use the number of protons to determine the size. And if I have fewer protons, I'm going to have a bigger radius because less protons pulling on the same amount of electrons, it won't be as efficient. There'll be an expansion. So when I look, magnesium has 12 protons, and you can look at the atomic number for that. The sodium ion has 11, neon has 10, the fluoride has 9, and the oxide has 8. So now we just need to rank them. So it's obvious the 12 protons are going to pull better on the 10 than the 8 elect protons could do on the 10. There's more protons pulling on fewer electrons here. There's less protons pulling on more. So the key here, and a lot of students make a mistake, is decreasing radius. So I want to go from the biggest to the smallest, because decreasing means as I go left to right, I'm going to have the smallest. So the smallest species should go here, and that's my magnesium ion. Why? 12 protons, only 10 electrons, so magnesium ion. The biggest species would go in the beginning. So what's that? The oxide ion. Why? Only 8 protons pulling on the 10 electrons. So reading left to right, ranking this from decreasing radius, I see that the oxide ion is the biggest, then the fluoride, then neon, then sodium, and then magnesium. I don't need a table to do this because I can just look at the number of electrons, they're all the same, and just use the number of protons to help me rank them. So I hope this helps in ranking different species, and I hope this makes sense. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them. And thanks for watching this week's of problem-solving sessions.